Dear ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, welcome everyone to the Banana Republic. Hello and welcome to Banana Republic. Energy is neither be created nor be destroyed. It can change its form from heat to light, light to chemical, chemical to sound, so on and so forth. But, you know, we are using lots of energy. This energy comes from fossil fuels. So from where this fossil fuel comes, it's from our forefathers. Billions of creatures lived here and died. So their energy is converted to chemical energy. That chemical energy we are extracting and using for producing everything, for lighting up our houses, our towns, our villages, everywhere we are using that energy. But these energy are creating some issues for us and for the future generations. How can we tackle that? And here one of the many options, of course we have electric uh, vehicles as one of the foremost options that uh, is being explored and there is already a reasonable market for it globally. Uh, one of the other option is um, to use hydrogen as one of the fuels. Why an alternative to this electric vehicle? Yeah. Why? Because, you know, electric vehicle, we say that there is no pollution, zero pollution, but it's, but it's not net zero. Okay, yeah. so producing this battery, okay, requires lots of energy. This yeah. energy comes from fossil fuels. Yeah. So just the tail end emission is zero. We are, we are looking for complete zero, net zero emission, right. or completely zero emission, zero pollution, First from all, start to finish. Yeah, for electric vehicles, the battery is, of course, the most critical part. And um, to, to actually manufacture these batteries, there are then these rare earth metals. Yes. Lithium. Uh, like lithium, uh, nickel, cadmium, even to a certain dex uh, extent, iridium is being used, which is yes. extremely rare. Um, and to mine all of this is not a mean task. And also, um, it is said that today, if all the uh, vehicle consumers switch from ICE, which is internal combustion engine, mm. to electric vehicles, we do not have the resources on our planet Earth to manufacture as many batteries. Yes. So that is not even possible unless we, of course, start mining mm. extraterrestrial objects like asteroids mm -hmm. or uh, comets or uh, meteors and so on. Um, so, of course, uh, this is a plus, solution as of today. Plus, you know, the energy utilization for, for you know, manufacturing such Manu batteries. Yeah. So from where do we get this energy? Right. So and as of today, yeah. ah. most of the energy comes from uh, thermal plants, yes. which then run on fuel like coal. So what's the yes. point? I mean, why are we even doing this? Because uh, the idea was to reduce the carbon footprint. And here we are manufacturing or producing electricity through uh, the same fossil fuels, which is in that case coal or natural gas. So that's where hydrogen comes as, a, as an option. So far, not as a viable option but definitely an option that is worth uh, exploring because that's something we have always fantasized, at least in the engineering field, that uh, hydrogen, if we could actually use hydrogen, the combustion of hydrogen would lead to water, and that's the only affluent. There is no pollution whatsoever, mm -hmm. and you can actually get pure water. It might have a little bit of a some, metallic taste. Some, some experts are yeah. uh, identifying, like, you know, this... Uh, uh, you know, byproduct that water uh, is drinkable. Yeah, it's so, even drink drinkable. Yes. Yeah, it might have a little bit metallic taste because uh, it yes. comes out of the tailpipe of the vehicle, but otherwise it can be even consumed by mm -hmm. a human. So um, this idea itself is so amazing. The practical application of the idea is not nearly as good, um, and um, the technology that we would need to do this. At a, at a large scale so that it, it comes to a price parity that mm. that competes with the existing fossil fuels and even EV is the biggest yes. challenge. Yes. Yeah. yes. So let us probably start from 
the the, uh, the very basics of hydrogen yeah the very basics of hydrogen so um, how do we get that idea so where do we yeah, you know hear about this hydrogen yeah. uh, in the first time yeah so uh, during our school days uh, we heard about hydrogen uh, in the 7th standard uh, that is uh, you know upper primary uh, school uh, when we start as learning this periodic table so in the periodic table we know that uh, the different elements are arranged uh, on the basis of atomic weight so hydrogen is a very first element and uh, uh, we started by hearting this uh, uh, you know this elements in the atomic table uh, teacher compelled us to by heart till uh, 20 uh, that is atomic number 1 to 20 so uh, actually at that time uh, we didn't have any idea how to how to you know uh, recollect all these things and all so what i did was hydrogen helium lithium beryllium hydrogen helium lithium beryllium hydrogen helium lithium beryllium n number of times i repeated and by heart it otherwise um, uh, the punishment will be there uh, <laughs> so like uh, you know uh, very thin um, you know tender uh, stems of uh, this guava Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Or uh, you know this uh, bamboo, ten- thin, tender uh, stems of bamboo. Which is extremely flexible bamboo. and would not break. Oh yeah. yes, they will beat like anything on the hand and thighs and all. So uh, normally, uh, if you don't, uh, uh, if you can't recollect one uh, to twenty, uh, at least we get two two beats yeah. <laughs> for using this this flexible stick. so that is the so punishment this is more or less mother. the childhood of every kid from the 80s or the 90s but i would assume that things have changed for the better now yes uh, but yeah this is uh, how uh, you know we were given tough love in our parents in also school. happy about this thing like uh, our parents go to school and tell the teacher that you can handle him like anything you can yeah. beat him like anything yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. So anyway uh, we learned it but yes. I mean you learned it I still don't remember that sequence Oh all <laughs> right okay I learned I just know that, that uh, carbon has atomic number of 6 and silicon is 14 and oh, then okay. and then hydrogen is 1 helium is 2 and so on but oh. yeah not as good as I didn't I didn't now. even know why we want to study this periodic table by exactly. hearting this periodic yeah. table I didn't even know It is actually much later uh, when I was watching a documentary as an adult um, a documentary by an astrophysicist a uh, British astrophysicist called Brian Cox where uh, he produced a, a program called uh, The Wonders of the Universe where he um, breaks it down this whole concept of atomic number and um, so so let me let me put this shortly so um, any element for so let's take hydrogen as an example it has the atomic number of 1 um, if two hydrogen atoms collide with each other an extreme with an extreme force with extreme speed they then combine together to become the next atomic number 2 which is helium and uh, and similarly two helium atoms can combine together to form uh, the next atomic number that would be say in that in that sense 2 plus 2 4 and so four. on and therefore for instance something like carbon which is the atomic number of 6 mm-hmm. is one of the most abundantly available mm-hmm. element in the universe yes. um which is also why we as as humans we are all i mean all Uh, made of humans, this uh, you know this but carbon. also plants and animals we are all made of yes, uh, yes, made yes. of uh, carbon. carbon yeah so um, the point is the lower the atomic number mm-hmm. the more common that element can be found across the universe oh, okay and higher the atomic number mm-hmm. that rarer it becomes oh. so for instance something like gold which mm-hmm. has got much higher atomic number yes. is naturally rare on earth okay. which is why gold has a certain value to it oh. and uh, if you go for something like platinum which has even higher atomic mm-hmm. number it becomes even more costlier Rarest. so uh, if you look at something like thorium or uranium or plutonium which has one of the highest atomic numbers mm-hmm. on the periodic table it becomes extremely rare Rarest. to extract that from earth so okay. if you it, if you probably mine um a field of this um, of probably 1 hectare mm. you might get uranium which which might come into mm. the gap of your fingernail okay. it is it is that difficult so so this this then automatically means what it means that hydrogen is 
than the most commonly, commonly found, found element, element in the universe then. not in the elemental form uh, it's in uh, in a compound form compound form yes yeah. say water then what is the prob- exactly so so here the challenge for us and uh, as as humans from a technology perspective is that hydrogen cannot be found in its in its elemental state yes on earth yes it is it found is there but uh, it is very rare 0.00005% that is a percentage of hydrogen in the atmosphere so hydrogen is the lightest because of this lightest in nature it can go up in the sky because the atomic number is low it is also light that's uh, yes, only yes and because it's light any hydrogen which would have been on the on the atmosphere or probably if through electrolysis if we if mm. we generate hydrogen out of water it will immediately yes, go escape. up uh, yes. and escape into into it space it can reach up to you know we can we can we can find hydrogen up to 1000 1200 kilometers from the earth surface Hmm. so that is the lightest in nature so you know when during my during my school days you know we have lots of festivals in our villages and all uh, festival season starts from jan jan feb march april may that's a festival season in our village uh, mostly in our area as well so when i uh, go to this this festivals and all i happen to see lots of balloons flying up in the sky so i wondered and uh, you know my my friends or my my relatives they told me okay see the hydrogen balloon hydrogen balloon my balloon is not flying because we are blowing up this balloon just using carbon yeah. dioxide yeah. so my balloon is not flying so somebody else uh, you know uh, leaving this balloon and is flying up in the sky i wondered and i heard that it is hydrogen balloon and later i realized that it is not hydrogen balloon it is just a helium balloon hydrogen balloon we can't we can't use hydrogen balloon in parties festivals and all because it it can easily explode yeah it is highly free- inflammable yes yeah, and, yes and therefore also not safe to yes. uh, to be handled, handled as much as helium is yes for instance so so these balloons are basically helium balloons not hydrogen balloons that's a that means it can react easily it's mm. something else when they get energy uh, from outside they can react and they can create energy that explosion means you know releasing some enormous amount of energy that is explosion right yeah. so this energy uh, you know we need to utilize this energy that is the way may scientists thought about this like utilizing this energy um, you know uh but and they didn't get this this uh, hydrogen in the in the free form or elemental form so they found it from water and uh, imagine splitting of this uh, hydrogen from oxygen yeah so, so water is basically h2o yes. right uh, two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen so the idea is to uh, to split this but some energy is needed for splitting this h2o where do we get that energy that is a question yes yeah. and as of today we have to use electricity to uh, conduct the process of electrolysis to get hydrogen out yes then the question is why can't we just use that electricity and run electric vehicles instead yes. so um there is already a process that we have to use to create electricity as we discussed earlier to either by using coal or natural gas and then on top of that creating hydrogen now from water using le- electricity is then the second process on top of it so there are basically two processes here yes so the idea is why should we even go that far mm. instead we use the electricity directly for running evs evs instead of then bringing this additional process on top of it yes. to create hydrogen out of water which is why as of today manufacturing hydrogen from water is an extre- extremely expensive process mm. which is not nearly as viable as yes. even it's not common ICE or even using an ev mm. so that is the biggest challenge so how do we simplify this process well enough that it brings an economic value and makes sense from a consumer perspective see uh this energy so we need to think about an alternative uh for this energy that currently we are using fossil fuel so we thought about alternative sources so we get some new gen energies so called new gen energies that is renewable energy sources so looking back to nature 
the sun, sea, wind, ocean waves, so on and so forth. So we are extracting energy. So we are focusing on producing this renewable energy, more renewable energy, and using this renewable energy, we are going to split this uh, water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. Then we can come to the conclusion that uh, you know the the end end pollution, the the, the amount of uh, pollutant is absolutely zero from the start to finish. That is, uh, we can attain this net zero level. So that is the reason why countries are glorifying this energy production from hydrogen. So oh, then comes to the term known as green hydrogen. There, there are some color coding for this hydrogen. So hydrogen can be produced from fossil fuels itself. That hydrogen is known as you know this this blue hydrogen or brown hydrogen, black hydrogen, and all depends on what type of chemical we are using or what type of methods we are adopting. Like carbon capture and storage is adopted, we can say that it is blue hydrogen. But actually, the source is fossil fuel. So currently, we are thinking about this green hydrogen. Green hydrogen means from the renewable energy source, splitting this hydrogen, producing energy, and we are using that energy. So uh, tail end emission, in the case of vehicle, tail end emission is zero. From the start itself, zero, no carbon footprint. That is the idea of green hydrogen. That is the reason why we are glorifying this green hydrogen. And you know, currently, we are we are experiencing this uh, increase in temperature in the atmosphere, so so-called global warming. Yeah. So yeah. we are living uh, in a tropical country. We really really experience that uh, warming because you know all this pattern completely changed here. A rainy season, a rainy pattern, or winter, everything getting more and more intense every year. And we are experiencing this, yeah. you know, and backlash. And as of today, the target is to uh, bring the global warming in check within 1.5 degrees. That itself is something we are struggling for. And now someone would think, okay, 1.5 degrees, that's not much. But we must remember that it is just 0.5 degree on top of our normal body temperature that makes us feel sick. If we go to around 1, 1.5, we are really down with a, with a proper fever. So a small temperature differential on, on, the, on the existing normal can really bring a lot of trouble ecologically, not yes. just for us. Of course, we have options of creating artificial environment through air conditioning mm -hmm. and so on. So this is going to then affect insects, birds, animals, aquatic life and so on. And new and creatures are, you know, uh, creating like, uh, you know, viruses are automatically created by this new environment. Yeah. So there is already uh, this risk that we run that there are uh, prehistoric viruses which are frozen in time in in the, um, for instance, in the Ice the Age, Mount during Everest. the Ice Age and also yeah. it's getting back to the nature yeah, because so of melting of this, uh, you know, Arctic uh, ice. Yeah. So um, this poses a lot of risk for the entire uh, ecology, which we may think is not a big deal. No, it is because um, there's something called the butterfly effect. If so, the entire ecology runs on a on a on a kind of a food chain system, wherein one uh, particular species is dependent on the other, is dependent on the other, and yes. so on. So if there is any um, effect in the sense, for example, um, if we talk about something like the June bug, mm. it's a, the name of the June bug is so because it, it appears in the month of June. June. But now because of the shift in climate, they are now showing up in the month of July, August and oh, so on. Okay. And any other species which is dependent on the appearance of June bug, probably a predator which consumes it, or probably even... Um, Their number also decrease because of uh, lack of food. Yeah, and also, for instance, something like pollination, which has to happen in a certain period of mm -hmm. the year, mm -hmm. that does not happen anymore. Okay. Yeah. So, so there is a there's a certain butterfly effect mm -hmm. to this. Uh, which that, then uh, you know, in that case, uh, production of some fruits or flowers that decreases, that in turn affect the livelihood of people, in turn affect the economy as well, and uh, availability of food also less in the market. Yeah. Exactly. So this is a much uh, 
bigger problem that that than we actually give it due credit for uh, and that's why it has become extremely critical that we solve this issue against time yes so recently you know a uh, new new discovery uh that is known as white hydrogen white hydrogen means uh, uh some of some of the scientists from i think from france they discovered this uh, from the earth crust because uh, earth is like you know structure of this earth is like some layers like an onion having different layers like crust mantle core and all crust is the outermost layer in the crust itself they some some depth from the surface they found this hydrogen in its free form so that is known as white hydrogen lots of hydrogen that is uh, tons of hydrogen or metric tons of hydrogen uh, free hydrogen there uh, so Uh, that hydrogen is known as white hydrogen that means it is easily available from nature itself now uh, explorations are going on and found this white hydrogen in uh, eastern europe um, then russia usa then oman so this type of countries are investing more to explore this uh, you know n- natural hydrogen from the earth crust mm. once uh, more more innovations are happening or more explorations are happening and finding this type of hydrogen in different parts of the world we can completely use that hydrogen right. white hydrogen so completely carbon free we don't need any electricity for splitting this water so we can save that electricity as well so th- i mean you know this this discovery or research and development in that sector is uh, fastly growing so that is a good sign from this global warming we can escape from this global warming yeah. or we can protect this world or this biosphere yeah and this is only one part of the problem which is the production of hydrogen yes the other part of the problem is how do we store it because as you mentioned earlier this is a highly inflammable gas that we are talking about and uh, the storage is not easy it seems yes that uh, the storage tanks have to be unusually thicker mm-hmm. to contain it and the compression ratio also has to be high so that we can yes. carry enough volume in a given mm-hmm. uh, container and uh, and which naturally means that transportation of hydrogen is not easy, easy either Yes. Yeah, and and storage also has to uh, has to be ensured through security mechanisms that there is no mm-hmm. accidental fire or damage yes. which could really be explosive in nature. Yes. It's not that simply uh, mm-hmm. um, a particular hydrogen fuel Carry, station just uh, just burns yes. down no it yes, will yes, really yes. explode. Yes. So all Because, of this Because you know this calorific value of hydrogen is very high. that means around the 34500 or something that mm. is very high which compared makes it to extremely attractive for us yes. to use it yeah but then at the same time it is the same reason mm. due to which it becomes also extremely dangerous to handle yes uh, some pilot projects uh, are there uh, in in saudi arabia the same aramco company Uh, they collaborate they are there saudi aramco sub saudi aramco their uh, you know subsidiary uh, faction that is uh, sabic another company this company and japan uh, you know energy corporation or something uh, they uh, collaborated and uh, you know they they developed this uh, blue hydrogen and they transported around 40 tons of blue hydrogen from saudi arabia to japan hmm. that was successful but what they did was they didn't transport this pure form of hydrogen they converted to ammonia and transported to japan and oh. uh, in japan they converted it back to uh, hydrogen oh, okay because ammonia is another uh, you know compounded form mm-hmm. right so that is the way they transported and research is going on you know south korea invested uh, investing in 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 saudi arabia as well south korea japan us and all investing in uh, this uh, saudi arabia uh, this aramco for developing uh, you know new technology for transporting this hydrogen and storing this hydrogen some pilot projects are there itself some uh, uh, you know hydrogen stations filling stations one or two stations there in saudi arabia as well mm-hmm. because such countries even even you know this uh, countries in the in the the uh, south south i mean 
uh, countries in the uh, this tropical region so not so developed that country is also involved in research and development of this hydrogen because you know inclusion is necessary otherwise right. the result will be uh, not as expecting as now hmm. uh, that means uh, in, so yes. inclusion in the sense inclusion uh, it, in the sense it should not be exclusively uh, for developed uh, countries for developed countries yeah, yeah it should be for developing countries as well like india 1.4 yeah. billion people and like not China just that say. but uh, there is a current global power structure which is based out of fossil fuels that power structure will also shift and that shift may or may not be something which goes out smoothly it, yes. there could also be conflicts between countries because okay. of that shift so all of that uh, is also then then here we are talking about some geopolitical issues then but yeah to have that technology across globally across for the different countries would make it an even plane hopefully wherein we don't have as much conflict as opposed to having this technology brought out from one of the prominent developed countries or mm -hmm. probably even countries like china uh, and they hold that technology exclusively for themselves could yes. lead to further um, see germany is one of the forerunners of this this uh, usage of hydrogen fuel in automotive uh, toyota uh, corporation invested there in germany with some of some of the service providers you know taxi service providers or uh, some other universities they they uh, you know they uh, tried some example there for using this uh, hydrogen as fuel for running vehicle the toyota mirai one example they completed around uh, you know 150000 kilometers so far uh, using this hydrogen so we can experience in in berlin that is a report i read it from some newspaper so that is a good thing like uh, some you know automotive companies are also investing in this hydrogen technology and in india uh, <laughs> the funny thing is that uh, we have one or two hydrogen cars one hydrogen car currently the, our our transport minister he is using hydrogen car the same toyota mirai car mm. so you know everybody is uh, promoting this hydrogen energy as an example indian minister is using he, uh, automatically he uh, you, know, you know he is trying to promote this hydrogen yeah, yeah. Uh, the the uh, even i am using this hydrogen vehicle and it is safe it is nice he is also telling the same thing like it right. is safe it is nice Uh, better than other other vehicles and all yeah. so that is good even celebrities should come forward for promoting this hydrogen things and all at the same time uh, it should be common it should be everywhere that's more, what uh, so yes. irrespective of who promotes or not if it is economically viable it will automatically become popular in yes. In, yes. in its usage so that's what they are Correct. also trying to achieve right um but here also there is a uh, there is a major challenge with ev uh, from a consumer perspective which hydrogen does not have and the challenge is the time to recharge the car mm -hmm. as yes. of today even if you have a fast charger it takes around 1 hour at least 45 minutes if yes. not more yes um to to have your car battery charged at least up to 70 or 80% okay. and further the last 20% that then becomes even more difficult mm -hmm. uh, or takes takes even more time okay um however for hydrogen it is like refilling a, a tank just uh, like filling car, you know natural gas it is just like that okay. it is just as simple uh, and it just takes as much little okay. time and another problem is that you know now we are filling lpg for running this uh, you know auto rickshaws taxis and all yeah. so lots of cases explosions are there lots right. of cases hmm. burning this car or auto, auto see even for that uh, lpg tank yeah so yeah. in the case of this hydrogen it's it should be more careful uh, while constructing which is why the safety thing. standards yeah, also matter yes, yes yeah so all of this uh, careless handling may yeah. cost as of today this technology is being explored but as of today uh, it is not seen as a viable option and electric vehicle is currently what we have to live with 
and even there there are lots of questions about how the electricity is being manufactured and so on costly infrastructure is needed yeah overall i feel producing. we are we are quite delayed as a species to fix this we should have this should have been something we fixed probably 30 years back or 50 years back we are we really feel the pressure now we see the climate is shifting probably i mean there are some experts who even say that none of this matters yeah. that the change the shift which is already here mm-hmm. is here to stay and will continue the chain yes. reaction to further take things and they don't uh, believe south. in global warming cause uh, majority on the other side they believe uh, in global cooling because uh, when we go through the geological uh, history uh, we can come to know that several extinction periods extinction different five or six uh, extinctions so all these extinctions uh, because of uh, global cooling not global warming so they don't believe global warming so so many in united states as well they are promoting this fossil fuels things and all this mining lobbies and all see a very very good example uh, in history that you know extinction of these dinosaurs uh, we we learned from books that uh, you know some meteor impact uh, yeah, caused, uh, meteor. resulted in the extinction of yeah. these dinosaurs but how dinosaurs extinct because of this meteor impact on a particular place like mexico when this meteor hit the earth surface lots of shock waves produced and heat yeah. heat generated you know this lots of earthquake volcanic eruption lava flow on the surface and completely climate changed so lots of you know ashes go up in the air and, and yeah. that prevented the sunlight and it gradually global cooling ah yeah. Yeah. yes finally resulted and in the extinction of and led to ice age uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes so so that is not global warming even global cooling yeah so so there is a truth to that because uh, if there is warm weather then life flourishes and if there is winter there is no life at all there is a truth to it but uh, that is a uh, fallacy in the argument that they are trying to use this logic to explain why we should continue to use fossil fuels i would really question the people who are making such comments and what is their background and what is their mm-hmm. stake in mm-hmm. in fossil fuel companies yes and then uh, you know when trump is supporting uh, this this yeah in general right wing is is, is supporting uh, fossil fuels because he's out bank i think so in that yeah. area yeah in general yeah right wing uh, does support uh, uh, fossil fuels and also fossil fuels are where most of the companies have invested if you look at even cars yes, yes. all the legacy companies like mm-hmm. uh, like volkswagen or you take uh, even expensive brands like lamborghini all of that all of them or even ferrari they have yes. their expertise yes, yes, yes. with uh, internal combustion engines okay. they are now forced they are now compelled to shift from ICEs to EV in a very short span of time which is yes. something none of them are comfortable with yes. but they have to do it out of compulsion so there is a resistance from the established market players mm-hmm. and uh, of course you know the politicians also who have their hand in glove yes. with these with these uh, companies because they give them political funding they also would take a reserve uh, they would also take a conservative stand here but uh, the truth is that global warming is happening we all can if we are really true to ourselves we can we know it we even feel it on a day to day basis especially people living in the tropical um, parts of parts of the earth um, and that's something we have to yes. fix sooner than later see more investment is needed so who will invest so government should come forward all governments should come forward and invest and give subsidies and promote then only it will work out so talking is enough so we need to do it yeah. okay for for producing this uh, you know pure form of energy or uh, non polluting form of energy so more investment is needed uh, currently you know around 300 rupees per kilogram of uh, hydrogen fuel that is the cost of hydrogen fuel in india okay so government plan to give uh, you know per kilogram 30 rupees subsidy and all they declared so they are trying to promote anyway so all government should come up 
uh, with new new or innovative ideas to support this this sector or this new emerging industry yeah. if we look at ev um, it is something which never picked up until someone as eccentric as elon musk stepped in to solve the problem mm-hmm. imagine if he was not there ah, yes. i don't know when we would have mm-hmm. really solved this mm-hmm. uh, this particular ev Yes. issue at a, at a large scale that people f- then find it as a fancy alternative correct not in so it's not just an alternative in the sense that uh, you know someone would want to simply switch from ic to ev but also seen as a as a luxury product now yeah. it's seen as also a social statement to have an ev now so all of that shift has happened because of this particular um uh, entrepreneur uh, See, elon musk now tata Tata, they are uh, going to introduce this Tata Nano car, the the the, the you know the smallest car or yeah, the, uh, it was what, it know, was uh, unfortunately marketed as the cheapest car at cheapest the time. Cheapest car in the world, like yeah. just one thousand two hundred dollars per car. That is yeah. around one lakh Indian but rupees. But it's a, but it's actually a marvel uh, in in terms of vehicle engineering. Yes, but now they are planning to introduce same Nano EV. for you know 4 to 6 lakh range yeah and That this time latest news. yeah i think w- would be a moment for adoption for uh, for nano because uh, from a from a size and structure perspective nano is apt for ev because uh, ah, yes. ev you have that uh, um, you have that power to weight ratio even more because you can't simply yes. keep adding batteries and for a, for a big and that design is marvelous yeah that's a new design we can show it in that picture yeah right yeah yes. so so like this elon musk uh, this type of company should come forward so in the case of uh, this uh, this telecommunication sector or uh, mobile technology in india or you know uh, popularization of this mobile usage this company reliance has played a major role they introduced a low cost mobile services in the very first time and gradually it picked up in india and yeah. now you know mil- millions of people use in mobile that is penetration is very high so this tata this type of company should come forward and you know nowadays uh, if we invest in this uh, green energy companies the uh, stocks are skyrocketing hmm. so right. example you know atani stock green energy stock they are they are producing this green energy renewable energy and all so their stock price one month back 946 because of that hindenburg issue that was around 4000 or something last month 9646 or something now 1600 plus in one month right yeah. see definitely uh, he he is having the largest uh, largest you know this uh, solar power plant in india and all so largest infrastructure for this adani group green energy company so yeah. so many foreign investors are also investing in his company so such type of companies are there so i'm not talking about i'm not promoting adani so you know green companies a new ipo was there last week in indian capital market that is indian renewable energy company that company also you know started like 50s or 60s now 100 it went up to 170 20 and all within one week and now it's around 100 or 101 something like that that means uh, that is having a future right so yeah. uh, because of uh, this popularization of uh, this renewable energy plus people are understanding the importance of uh, you know bringing down this temperature or bringing down this carbon emission now yeah. gradually keep the temperature uh, under control yes, yes. Yeah. in india uh, we have uh, a, a new ministry new and renewable energy ministry Uh, this ministry uh, started a new program for promoting green hydrogen that is national green hydrogen mission so our aim uh, we are aiming at uh, this particular year 2030 2030 is a landmark year for you know all around the world in in case of this it's a global target thing, say a global yeah. target and we are targeting this 2020 uh for producing this uh, hydrogen 5 million metric tons of hydrogen per year 
by 2030. That is our target. And we are aiming at adding 125 gigawatts of uh, this renewable energy as well. That is our target. For, for achieving this target, you know, we, we started this mission, mission mod project that is National Green Hydrogen Mission and investing around uh, uh, 8 lakh crore or something. So that will serve one one lakh crore tons of uh, you know carbon from the atmosphere greenhouse gases that will reduce one lakh tons of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere and also multiple effects are there. A country like India, like a developing country, not a developed one, not very rich, you know, lots of population and all. This is a big challenge for the government, for the people as well. So I I hope that uh, it will be successful because. Uh, um, you know, new new hydrogen train uh, is in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. So new innovations are coming in India. Uh, I, I'm talking about India because uh, you know this is the pure example of a developing country and pure example of uh, a diverse country, diversity and all. In such a country, if uh, we achieve uh, this type of target, that will that will set an example throughout the world uh, that uh, will motivate other countries and it is also well. extremely in important for countries like india or even south africa and so on because uh, due to global warming uh, it is uh, countries on the uh, on the equatorial belt which gets affected the most yes and india of course uh, will also take a reasonable brunt and uh, uh, this equatorial countries or this tropical countries uh, having this source for this renewable energy because uh, we are sunshine countries, lots of sunlight available here for producing solar energy, right. wind yeah. energy and all. So we have sources but uh, we need technology and uh, uh, support, uh, financial support from international agencies. Uh, uh, you know, in the case of Africa or Middle East uh, or, or uh, Far East Asia and all. And we have spoken about this in the past in one of the previous episodes about the research and development funding um, that uh, different countries invest. Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, India has one of the lowest, yes. uh, not, not, not the most, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, not, the, not the absolute lowest, but one of the, one of the uh, lower ranks when it comes to investment into uh, research Decision and development. development. Um, that's where we need to step up a bit and that's where countries like um, like Germany or in mm. in general European countries, uh, especially Scandinavian countries for instance, are spending or have been spending and uh, countries like Norway is completely electrified more or less. Even their oh, heavy yes. machinery has yes. been electrified which is really cool. So, um, so that is something where we also need to step up. Yes. I think uh, this uh, developed country is also supporting developing countries uh, in this course, like uh, German bank KFW, French bank AFD. They're providing technical support, financial support as well, World Bank, AIIB, this type of international institutions are, are supporting. Uh, but I think more more international cooperation is needed for technology transfer things and all. Then only a parity will attain or inclusion will attain. Then only we can we can achieve this goal, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, decreasing uh, temperature global temperature 1.5 degree Celsius. Or keeping the global temperature in check. Check. And, yeah. Yes. And make this planet as a beautiful place to live in. Yeah. 